things to show you real quick. So as you all know, uh, hi-ho, Frenchie and I have been working on this model to like basically try to see how all of the data is correlated in the market to see how they're gaming everything. Um, because as the market's been decaying all year long, it's clear that there's no liquidity the secondary exchange or the lit market it seems to all be in the primary market or the etf market money money market fund and seems to primarily focus around the repo window at 12 15 central and 12 45 central that time frame so this is the chart here you know excessive demand historic never seen before we've seen some of the data and we've always want to know you know what's the correlation here who's partnering with who and i think we're able to tell a little bit right now. So let's take a look. So when we put in the numbers, the field Toronto Dominion Collateral and the field UBS Principal appear highly correlated. Now I'm gonna leave this entire PowerPoint below that actually has these, uh, these graphs embedded in the PowerPoint so you can actually see the data tables um, after you download this uh, presentation. So basically, to we we see in the chart here, you know, very very correlated um, movement. And in two thousand and eight, after doing a little research, so what we do is if if it's correlated, then we research to see if there's any indication that that's true. So in connection with the relief requested by TD or the Toronto Dominion Bank, please note the substantially similar exemptive relief from Rule one hundred one and or Rule one hundred two of Regulation M, which is you know of course revolving around derivatives hedging, asset management activities, and insurance activities to TD under your exemptive letter. So basically, UBS AG sent an uh, exemptive letter for derivatives and all this stuff on uh, November 19th of, 29th of 2009. So there is some correlation there. Well, no, derivatives are still the problem. So could it be that between 2009 and today, uh, they're just now sorting out their problems? Absolutely. But do we know 100%? Not quite. I'm just trying to show you what we found. Next is HSBC and Field Morgan Stanley principal appear highly correlated. So uh, to reiterate, uh, collateral is you give up collateral when you want to borrow and then you swap for principal. So if you're borrowing your principal, if you're the lender, you have collateral. So HSBC collateral and Field Morgan Stanley principal appear highly correlated. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Interesting shit. Now, and these, this is measured in, uh, this is billions here and this is, uh, billions here. So we got 160 billion versus 1471.39. And then it's consistently 160 and then 460 and then 660 and then 660. And it's interesting because if you look at the pricing, they like the uh, HSBC's price stays around, or the demand stays around the same as the principal. So it's very interesting to see that. So for example, uh, it drops down a little bit. This does. This stays the same. That's the only time that happens. Goes way up to 460. This goes way down to 474. This stays at 460. This stays within the same range. Then we jump up to 660, we jump up to 674. 660, 464. 660, 463, 500, 411, 546, 321, and then it's been going down ever since. So without you know knowing exactly what they're doing, this is our best window into the collusion if there is any between these parties. Moving on. Field, Bank of New York Mellon collateral and field Fidelity principle appear highly dependent on each other. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read the article from the last slide. Um, HSBC to hire Morgan Stanley after cutting brokerage ties with Goldman Sachs. This was on June 10. Banking giant HSBC is set to hire Morgan Stanley as joint corporate brokers to replace rivals Goldman Sachs. So take that for what it's worth. I'm not saying this is certain. I'm just saying it's very interesting once you plug in the data and you have it looked at. So now we look at the field of Bank of New York Mellon, and uh, that's the collateral, and we have Fidelity Principal, highly dependent on one another. Now, we have this article from the 8th of June this year. Uh, Say Bucknor, who most recently led the North America group at Bank of New York Mellon, affiliated uh, Newton Investment Management, has joined Fidelity as head of consultant relations. So, and this is pretty crazy, because 496, 496, 3131, uh, basically three... And we stay about 31, 
look, we dropped to uh, to two, and then all of a sudden we dropped to twenty cents. Then we dropped to a buck and dropped to seventy-one cents. So again, hard to tell for sure, but the data is interesting. Next, we have uh, Charles Schwab and Field Morgan Stanley. This looks basically like if you would have flipped the colors around, it looked the same. Um, the four ninety-nine months correlation between Morgan and Charles is 0 0.56 over overlapping areas, which uh, you can't see here. It's on the uh, website that I got pulled this from. Basically they were, it was two circles. And if, if it's a score of zero, there's basically no correlation. If it's, you know, the closer it is to one, the, the more correlated they are as in the more Morgan Stanley moves, the more Charles Schwab moves as in they have very similar portfolios. So just pointing that out. But yeah. I mean, let me know what y'all think about this down below. This is still a, a, a major work in progress. We're not completed by any means. It's going to take some time. We want to have an entire year's worth of data before we're ready to say that we're certain about anything. But just from the get go, you know, it's it's already making some pretty clear connections that could help determine some interesting shit down the pipe. So there you have it. I'll leave this below. Don't forget. I'll leave it in the description so you can download it. You can mess with these charts. The repo is so dirty. Um, so yeah, you should be able to click on it and like move it around and whatnot and look at the data charts. So I'll link this below and, uh, let me know what y'all think. Pretty cool shit. Pretty cool shit. That's, that's nuts. And this is the data we're going off of, by the way, this is the collateral data from the office of financial uh, research. And I put the dates in from three thirty one to 731. And now with this reporting, you only get the holdings or the reporting once every um, month. So in this instance, it's actually backwards from what you think, because when this is reported at the end of the month, they're already have done the repo. So for example, whenever we see this right here, really Schwab is actually the one borrowing, but it's shows him or not him but this shows, shows the company with the principal because w at the time of recording it was parked at the repo so keep that in mind but yeah uh, lots of lots of correlations here you can see this right here on the side this is all of the correlating things that um excel points out and it, it got about i want to say 16 or different so like i'll just go through the list real quick um so we got Schwab principal and Morgan Stanley principal, highly correlated. We have Goldman Sachs collateral and UBS collateral, very correlated. We have Deutsche Bank C and UBS C determined by each other. We have JP Morgan Chase collateral and Bank of Scotland collateral, highly correlated. We have Bank of Canada collateral and Field ING Group NV collateral, dependent on one another. We have Credit Agricole and Field Stonex Group C, highly correlated. We have Field Other Repo Collateral, as in not from one of the general money market funds we just we just saw. And Field's Bank of Tokyo, Mitsubishi, appear highly correlated. I wonder if that's because they're one of the only foreign money market funds in here. Interesting. Um, and then I think there's one more. Yeah, we have Bank of New York Mellon C, Fidelity P that we just saw. HSBC C and Fidelity, I'm sorry, and Field Morgan Stanley P or HSBC Collateral and Morgan Stanley Principal. We discussed that in the slides. And then the Toronto UBS. And then we have Standard Charter Bank appears highly determined by Field Wells Fargo Collateral. And then we have Citigroup Collateral and Field Mizuho Collateral, highly correlated. And then we have, last but not least, Treasury Repo Principal and Field Royal Bank of Scotland Collateral, highly dependent on one another. So let me know what y'all think. Um, data is pretty cool, especially when you can visualize it.